What is the role of religion in our ever-changing world? From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Issues of Faith. Welcome, everyone, to Issues of Faith. Interesting topic today. We are talking about churches providing sanctuary to immigrants here in Nashville. Happy to have with us, to start off the show, Kelly X, the pastor, the lead minister at the Presbyterian Church USA Village Church in Madison. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. So we're talking about, as I said, providing sanctuary to immigrants. Your church has decided to do that. Why and how did that happen? Um, well, uh, really Facebook, interestingly enough. Um, I think with the this new administration coming in and, and making decisions, um, running on building a wall, um, talking about uh, doing travel bans and all those different things like that, I saw this as a moral issue, knowing that people are um, sacrificing their lives to, for freedom, to leave, leave where they are, um, to come here, and as um, a person of faith, uh, a part leading a community of faith, that we are to help in in whatever way necessary for their safety. We've seen in other um, parts of the country mm -hmm where um, immigrants have actually gone to a church. Mm -hmm. it, it made national attention in Denver. Uh, somebody who was undocumented, who had been here a long time, went and sought sanctuary in a church. Correct. Have we seen that in Nashville? Um, currently, um, thanks be to God, we have not had to have um, any families take sanctuary. However, um, as the community of faith, um, uh, a number of different uh, churches, organizations, um, Union workers um, have gotten together to create a Nashville Community Defense to be proactive in this work. Um, and so, some churches are doing are doing sanctu are willing to do sanctuary. Now, sanctuary is the allowing of people to live on the church premises. Uh, a premises. My church actually does not do sanctuary. We don't own a building. We don't have have that type of space. We actually stand in solidarity. Um, and so, doing that work ahead of time and being proactive. And then, and so solidarity work includes uh, going before the ICE office um, and doing visuals and praying with people. It, it means letting the the um, the city the fo know that we stand with immigrants and that we are not interested in um, allowing folks to be persecuted, sent back. And so that ahead of time, hopefully, and our, our, our hope is that that will prevent folks from having to be a part of truly living in churches. However, if that comes down to that, there are a number of churches um, and number of faith organizations that are willing to help in that. So what have you heard uh, from the immigrant community? How much concern is there um, <clears throat> based on what's happening nationally? I think there's a lot of concern. People are, we all have families. We all are a part of uh, communities that are just beyond what our ethnic backgrounds are. And so um, the thought that uh, children could come home and their parents aren't present is very problematic. And so uh, knowing that a, tra a traffic stop could result in a deportation is is a fear that is present um, and and so with that you want to make sure that you're you're ready and prepared at all times and also that immigrants know their rights and how to to deal with um, these situations so I read an article four to eight hundred churches nationally are participating four to eight hundred churches and and there's some that are very passionate about it mm -hmm. there's there's some that that are passionate on the other side quite frankly like the immigration debate when you went to your church and you started talking about this, how tough was that decision? Was there debate on both sides? You know, what, how, how did that play out? Being um, the leader of a mostly African American congregation, um, for myself as as a leader, it this reminds me very much so of uh, Underground Railroad. It is people leaving. Uh, places that they risk their lives, their fear, and so it is a moral decision to stand and to be a welcome to strangers, to, to provide hospitality. And so uh, 
the issue wasn't whether or not they need help. The question is, is in the midst of all that I'm dealing, do I have time in my schedule? Is there a place for in way that I can actually provide some form of support? And when you recognize that I also, um, that, that, how do I put it? There are, I would say systemic issues um, that go across this country when it comes to not standing up for the oppressed. And so being a part of a marginalized community, I recognize that I also have privileges to help those who have less than what we have. And so there was not necessarily a pushback on why not or, or they don't deserve to be here. It is definitely what can we do to help and how much do we actually have to offer. And I guess my question would be, mm -hmm how likely is it that it will come to that? So we have seen it, we have seen it, and, and it was a while ago that I saw the stories about Denver and, and Colorado, what's happened. Mm -hmm. And I think people thought right after the election there was gonna be a, a lot of this. I don't, mm -hmm. is it materializing? Or is it realistic that we are going to have immigrants having to seek shelter in churches here in Nashville. Well, thankfully for us, that there haven't been rolling raids or anything like that, but they have, have been raised in Alabama of, of, of showing up in, in apartments and, and, and knocking on doors and taking people away. Um, and so when, it's not about uh, will it happen, if it'll happen. It's about being, being ready just in case. It's, all, it's always being vigilant. And it's also about having conversations with the immigrant community so that they're listening, we're listening, and we're providing information. So let's talk to some of the people who have concerns about this, who okay. maybe feel the other way. That okay. if somebody is here and they, they don't have the proper documentation, then you know, they, they, they need to get right. You know, they, they shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. what, what, do you, what do you say when, when, when you hear that kind of talk? You're obviously passionate about mm -hmm. this. You know, what, 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 what do you say? Um, I say that this is a moral issue. This is not a um, fully a legal issue. Uh, we don't look back at those who ran the Underground Railroad and say that, that enslaved people need to go back and get their paperwork straight. We don't, we don't say that. We say, Harriet Tubman deserves to be on a $10 bill because she worked to free thousands of people. We don't say to those, um, those cities and different people across uh, Europe who fought to make sure that, um, that Jews weren't um, killed in the Holocaust. We commend them. We celebrate them. And so in the same way, there are folks who are scared for their lives and their livelihood. They're concerned about their families. If you send your children from Central America by themselves to go and then to cross deserts to, to encounter others, you have to be really concerned about something. There is a serious problem. The risk that one must take to be here means that they're leaving something that is devastating. And then to just send them back and tell them to um, wait and to get paper stamped is immoral. We, God calls us to show love and to be loving and to be kind. We are called um, to, to love God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And immigrants are our neighbors and we must treat them as such. This has borne itself from the notion that there are certain, I think, safe areas. Churches are one of those. Mm -hmm. I think hospitals are one. And schools. And schools. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case? I mean, how confident are you that if somebody were sheltered in a church here in Nashville, that they wouldn't, that they would have that safe space? That 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 they would they would hmm. they wouldn't just go in and say, okay, you've got to go. My confidence is not necessarily in whether or not. Uh, people will hold to the standards that they have set for themselves. My confidence is in God, and that, um, that God will provide protection, and that we will be the hands, the feet, the, the mouth, to do the work that God has called us to do. Uh, we have seen, however, that when it comes to schools, um, that, that what ICE has done is to say, well, we're gonna be two blocks away 
So when you go pick up your kids, you can pick them up in the same zone, but then we'll, we'll be there standing there to then pick up. And those things happen in Southern California. So we know that, that, that those type of uh, guidelines are arbitrary. And so it is our hope that however this might be used that the churches um, and other faith communities who decide to become a part of this either as solidarity partners or as providing sanctuary that um, that 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 work will be um, that we will have a voice enough that even if the ice workers say oh we're going to do whatever that hopefully there'll be cameras there so that we can see uh, and then hold them accountable to to the guidelines that they have set for themselves so when did you decide to do this did you decide to do this right after uh, i guess the election and and do you feel has anything since that time, and I know there was a lot of concern at that time, has anything kind of allayed some of your concerns? Or have your concerns increased? Like, where, where do you stand as far as how concerned you are that, again, there's actually going to be a situation, like we see in Colorado and some other place, where there's a, an immigrant that's having to seek shelter in a church here in Nashville? I'm very concerned. Um, I, 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 I get hope um, in doing the work. But I, I just don't trust this administration. Um, it is difficult to know whether or not what is being said is actually, you know, are we going to build a wall? Is Mexico going to pay for it? No, you're going to pay for it. We're going to pay for it. They're going to pay us back. All these different things like that. It's very difficult to know what is true, what is false, what will happen and won't, what won't happen. And so I'd rather be ready for the worst while hoping for the best. So you all are part of this, again, Village Church, uh, Presbyterian Church USA in Madison. Mm -hmm. There's Edge Hill United Methodist Church. I read they have, they are part of this. I read four to 800 churches nationwide mm -hmm. are part of this sanctuary um, program, providing mm -hmm. sanctuary to immigrants. How many other churches, there's two here now in, in Nashville. How many others in, in Nashville that you're aware of? There are quite a few churches. There are a number of churches um, that are a part, that are coming to meetings, that are a part of this. There are um, churches that are willing to open their doors for sanctuary, both for long-term and some short-term immediate, you know, immediate type of situations. There are a number of churches who are, are available and willing to do solidarity work. Um, we're also reaching out not just to be a church movement, but to be a, um, a interfaith movement. So reaching out to, to mosques and synagogues and, and uh, so that this is not just a, a denominational thing. This is not just a few people. This is a moral issue, a faith issue, um, and it's a human issue that must be addressed. Well, I want to thank you for coming on to talk about it. We're going to take a break, and we're going to bring on a member of the immigrant community yes. um, uh, who's going to talk about this, um, uh, who's also helping to organize all of this. Take a break. Be back right after this.